Hello guys, gals, non-binary pals, and waterfowls. It's me, Big Mike. And you can probably tell from the serious tone in my voice, if not from the title of this video, that we are in for a bit of a heavy video today. And once again, we are returning to the world of AI. In today's world, AI is becoming an ever-growing part of our lives, whether we like it or not. And it has long been feared that AI would disrupt the workforce. And this wasn't just some tinfoil hat conspiracy theorists or paranoid individuals who believed this. Oh no fam. Major governing bodies as far back as the 20 teens were discussing how to handle the mass layoffs that are sure to come with the adoption of AI and at the moment AI is doing just that. Or rather, it's setting the stage to do just that. Recently, a video has gone viral depicting Wendy's testing implementing an AI in its drive throughs And this has caused quite a stir online as people see this as eventually taking jobs. Which size for the chocolate bestie? Medium. Can I get you anything else today? No, thank you. But what if AI not only had the possibility to take your job, but also to prevent you from getting one in the first place? What's going on? More and more companies today are using AI for either a part of the hiring process or for the entire thing. Some do things seemingly harmless enough like using AI to write job descriptions. While more alarming, others use it to give them a list of reasons why they should or should not hire a final round candidate. And just as alarming, AI is also being used to conduct job interviews with prospective employees. A survey released in the summer of 2023 by Resume Builder found that 4 out of 10 companies would use AI to speak to job applicants in interviews by 2024, with 15% of those same companies stating hiring decisions would be made without any human input. Laura Michelle Davis of CNET wrote, Today, it's not uncommon for applicants to be rejected by a robot before they're connected with an actual human in human resources. And if that seems impersonal to you, you are definitely not wrong. It seems the human element of hiring is getting phased out. One recent job applicant, Adele Walton, described her experience to The Guardian stating, I expected a person or a panel. When I clicked on the call, I was surprised to enter a chat room with just myself. But her face was not the only thing on the screen. Questions also popped up there, and when they did, she had 60 seconds to reply. She explained, I was looking at how my face was moving, looking at how I looked on screen. As someone who struggled with body dysmorphia, I found that my face was in an unnecessarily distraction in the interview process. I know I would have done better if there was another person there. Unfortunately, she did not get another chance. She further elaborated, In an in-person meeting, you get more social prompts from the other person. In this case, I was just talking to myself, or an AI system, with no measure of how well I was doing. I couldn't read anybody's face, body language, or see them nod yes. That small type of human reassurance that you get in a real interview is completely lost when companies outsource interviews to AI. Her experience was by no means unique either. Another job seeker named Ty was doing a job interview by phone and went into the call expecting to talk with a human recruiter. And at first, they actually believed they were when it introduced itself as Jamie. Things soon took a mechanized turn, however. Ty explained, The voice sounded similar to Siri. It was creepy. And it was not just creepy, it had poor communication skills. Jamie was asking all of the questions you would normally expect at a job interview for such a position. What's your management style? Are you a good fit for this role? But she would always cut Ty off never allowing them to fully answer the questions. Ty explained, After cutting me off, the AI would respond, Great! Sounds good! Perfect! 
and move on to the next question. After the third or fourth question, the AI just stopped after a short pause and told me that the interview was completed and someone from the team would reach out later. Sadly, however, Ty did not get the job. Why is it happening? Now that we have looked at what is going on and at some of the user experiences with this system, a good question to ask next would be why? Why is this happening? The short answer is efficiency, productivity, and cost effectiveness. Employers commonly explain it's used to help cut back on the tasks those in charge of hiring have to do, such as writing job descriptions and shifting through resumes so that those individuals can focus on more strategic tasks. That is really only part of it though. Not only can AI be used to save time by doing these tasks, it can also cover far more ground and complete many more tasks than any human ever could. A person likely has the ability to only conduct several interviews a day. AI has no such limitations. It doesn't need a lunch break and it doesn't need to clock out at the end of the day. However, AI can also process and analyze data in far greater quantities, much faster than any human ever could hope to do. Many companies are seeking opportunities for cutting costs. Once this technology gets to the point where companies believe it can be safely depended on, Positions in companies which traditionally handle this type of work will be made obsolete, causing layoffs and cutting out of said positions. And those that do, by some miracle happen to evade being made redundant by a machine, can expect to receive a lower average salary, thus saving companies thousands and thousands of dollars. What problems does it bring? The final pertinent question we're going to be looking at is what problems does it bring? Here are some of the issues we're going to be looking at are those that affect AI in general, or AI when it's in such a position as having to make judgment calls about people, and those specifically about AI in the hiring process. One common remark I hear from those who don't have a lot of knowledge about AI is that humans are biased, but AI will be unbiased. Sadly, that's not true. AI, in order to function, must be fed astronomical amounts of data. Data that must come from humans. And humans definitely aren't unbiased. And so, as a result, data from humans will be biased. And as the old adage goes, you are what you eat. AI that is fed said data will be biased. So any faults of making AI judges, police, or in this case, an entity involved in the hiring process because they would be unbiased is completely unfounded. This is just not a theoretical issue or Big Mike wearing a tinfoil hat. But this is something we have actually seen. Amazon had an issue with an in-house hiring algorithm that was taught using data submitted by those seeking employment. And this algorithm favored men and had a far less favorable view of resumes that contained the word woman. This was due to the data they used to feed the algorithm originating 10 years prior when male dominance of the tech industry was much more pronounced. In order to avoid such biases, some have suggested to remove identifying information from applicant data fed to AI, such as names and zip codes. However, some have raised concern over the inclusion of education in said data. It is believed that it could lead to AI developing a favoritism towards individuals who attended an Ivy League school. On a similar note, there is a certain amount of classism at play here. You see, it's not the CEOs and the people at the top that are going to suffer from this. Once your salary hits a particular threshold, you no longer apply for jobs as a normal person would. You network. But it's your working class people, your entry level people, and your gig workers that are going to be hit the hardest by all of this. Rory Mir, Associate Director of Community Organizing at the Electronic Frontier Foundation, explains, AI won't pick a CEO. 
it might filter applicants for management, and it may have the final say on hiring a gig worker, automated hiring will have an outsized impact on marginalized folks who rely on more precarious lines of work. Another common issue, and again, not one limited to the issue of AI in the hiring process, is hallucinations. This issue is one we discussed before, but just in case you are new, hallucinations in regards to AI are incorrect or misleading results that AI models generate. These errors can be caused by a variety of factors, including insufficient training data, incorrect assumptions made by the model, or biases in the data used to train the model. Some experts in the field are predicting that by the end of 2024, at least one major company will hire a non-existent person for a real job, and another will hire a real person for a non-existent job. J.P. Gounder, Vice President and Principal Analysis on Forrester's Future of Work team, who made his prediction, further states, We think there will be a bit of AI mischief in talent management and recruiting. AI can create all of these incredible new magical moments, but it also creates what we call mayhem, which is when things start to go a little haywire. And the final major issue is that using AI in this manner takes the human element out of human resources, a type of position whose very nature depends on being able to effectively communicate, which includes being able to appropriately give and interpret certain cues. AI can't give these. This was one of the issues Adele Walton had with her experience. The AI wasn't giving her the social cues you'd normally come to expect from a human in that same position. Also, an AI can gauge a prospective employee's technical qualifications, but it cannot judge things like emotional intelligence, creativity, and their ability to adapt. My thoughts on all of this. I'm not a big fan of this at all. I'm not anti-AI. I believe AI has its uses, and it's all well and good in its proper place. But it should not be in a position where it's making judgment calls, or in a position that needs human-on-human -human interaction, nor should it be used to make art, but that's a story for another day. But unfortunately, I feel like this situation is more than likely here to stay. That being said, there are two reasons why I could be wrong. And these glimmers of hopes are, the first is that AI is starting to be trained on data produced by AI. And this is an issue that is plaguing all aspects of AI, from text producing models to those focused on images and videos. The result of AI consuming AI produced data is that the quality and also diversity of the output has drastically decreased. Going back to that old adage I mentioned earlier, you are what you eat. Though, currently, there are no examples of this happening with models being used for hiring. With their constant use and with the rise of job seekers who are also using AI to help give them an edge, whose output the hiring AIs are consuming, it's only a matter of time before they become like the proverbial snake who bites and poisons himself. Right? Well, unfortunately, not necessarily. As cool and as poetic as that image is, there are already ideas on the table to remedy this issue such as to clearly mark AI content as such, so other AI would not feast upon it. However, with growing anti-AI sentiment, that path may end up being a hard sell, as content labeled as AI would simply be applying a target to themselves for boycotts and such. So, long story short, this could bring about the end of AI in the hiring process but it faces some obstacles that it must overcome. The second reason is a rather ironic one. One of the main reasons we're in this situation may very well be what gets us out, 
and that is greed. By using these AI in the hiring process, companies are hoping to be more efficient and save on time, which in the end would save on money. But one thing that could make these companies drop this practice just as fast as they adopted it would be it losing them money. And this could go one of two ways. It could make a mistake, either due to a hallucination or being fed junk data and thus costing the company using it a substantial amount of money. Or due to a bias in its hiring process, it could lead to a class action lawsuit against the company using it on the grounds of discrimination. Now the one caveat here I see is that it would have to be something that either happens multiple times or something that causes a significant, I mean a huge level of loss, but it could very well be effective. And that's really all my views on this situation, but I would love to hear from you all in the comments below. What is your take on all of this? This video topic was suggested by one of my damn good friends, JP the Adventurer. And if you have a topic or story you'd like to see me cover, please feel free to shoot me a DM on Twitter or an email at the email address below. I can't promise I'll be able to cover everything sent to me, but if I can, I definitely will fam. And with that, we'll call the video here. Hello guys, gals, non-binary pals, and waterfowls, and welcome back to another Big Mike Inslate. The part of the video that's not really part of the video, where I'm all natural, off the cuff, Duck Daddy. That's right, baby. Duck Daddy is 100% human, duck, or goose, depending on your interpretation, and definitely not AI. And fam, this has been a video, and this has actually been a really, really interesting video, and this has actually been my first time using my Inslate for the purpose that I originally attended it to use it for. And that is to kind of cool off, off after a more intense video. And so this is the first time I've used this in quite a while in that manner. So this is a bit of a heavy topic, not as heavy as some of the other AI topics we've covered. But it's still a bit of a heavy topic. But before I go to rambling too, too much, I just want to make one announcement. One really big announcement. So by the time this video comes out, this will be relevant. On Thursday, May the 2nd at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I'm going to be appearing on my damn good friend, Auditor Stream, on his show, Broadcast from Otter Space. This is going to be my second time appearing there. The last time I appeared there was over a year ago or about a year ago. You know, he is a great guy. He is a fantastic friend and he has a great sense of humor. He always has a good time. And so I'm looking forward to seeing what he has in store. You know, he tells me he has a new game there. So I'm looking forward to checking it out. So please, if you can, please stop by and I would love to have you in chat, fam. So with that out of the way, I want to talk about some stuff that are not announcement related. So... In making this video, I kind of touched on a subject that I really, really am interested in. And it's a subject that probably deserves its own video. And that's the, the phenomenon of AI being fed data from other AI and the end result. I find it absolutely fascinating. I'm not sure if I'll ever make a video about that because some other people have covered it. People far more knowledgeable than I am. So I'm not sure what I could bring to the table, but I would love to take a deeper look at it. And maybe there is something I can bring there. So, but that's something I would like to do. I know by coincidence and not by design, I normally only do like one AI video a year. Um, but, you know, I, I like to treat it like I treat my UAP videos. If something good comes up, if an interesting story comes up, I, I want to tackle it. If I feel inspired to, or if I feel like I have something that I can bring to the table in regards to the discussion. So, yeah, you might see some more AI content coming soon. Now, speaking of UAPs, actually, I have a, another video in the works of a Big Mike, or for a Big Mike, Big Universe video. Now, this video, by coincidence and not by design, is going to cover some pretty cool updates, if it ever sees the light of day of some major news stories we covered in the past. So check that out or be on the lookout for that. And 
Now, just kind of one thing I just want to bring up here is that um, I actually I actually have some issues, some technical issues I'm dealing with at the moment. I have a I have a laptop that's rather old that I use. I well, it's considerably old. I got it in 2016, and it dates probably from 2014, 2015. Anyway, the screen is starting to go out on it. I'm I actually I have some really awesome person. I'm not going to name their name because I am not sure if they want to remain anonymous or not. But that person was really cool and donated the money to me to get my screen repaired. And so I really, really appreciate that. Um, you know, you, you are my lifesaver fam and you know who you are. And so now I'm just trying to wait for the right time to get that done because I can still use my laptop. I'm using it to make this video. Um, but I have to, you know, with stuff in my personal life and my duties and such, I have to, you know, get time squared away for that before I can do that. So as a result of this situation uh, of my laptop screen dying, I had to look into some financial uh, situations that are going on in my life. And I did get some good news from that. And one of those good news or the good news I found out was that Originally, for some reason, I thought I would need a large, large sum of money either next year or the year after next. But turns out that was not true at all. And so now instead of trying to gather money for that one thing, I can now focus any excess money I may have to saving up for a new computer. This is going to be a slow process, but it's a process that I am going to engage in. And by slow, I mean maybe this five to fifteen dollars a week but i want to bring up and i'm not one who normally pushes this this type of thing but i do have a Kofi account and if you would like to help contribute to my new computer fund please feel free to uh drop me a donation now it's not something that i definitely need um, and, but it's something that could help. It's something that could help speed up the process. And with a new computer, I could, you know, I could do different, uh, new kinds of content. I could cover newer indie games or indie games that are on a higher end. I could make other types of videos. I can use videos that involve a uh, virtual machines and such. Um, and there are many other things I can do as well, like actually trying my hand at streaming. And maybe even eventually getting a proper VTuber model. Though honestly, I would like to be a VTuber and that's my goal. It's not really high up on there. So that's, but it is something that I could theoretically do. But anyway, like I said, you know, this isn't a must. This isn't a something that has to happen. But, you know, if you, if you would, if you would like to help, you know, I would definitely appreciate it. Um, but regardless whether or not you can or you would like to, you're still loved and appreciated. But just the very fact that you guys are here, you guys, gals, non-binary pals, and waterfowls are here watching this video means all the world to me. So with all of this out of the way, I'm going to end it here. Special thanks to Fran, who does a fantastic job of doing my art. She's going to be back on Twitter at some point in time. Don't know when. It's been a minute since I talked to her. I should probably catch up with her again soon. But when she does come back to Twitter, please be sure to give her a follow. And if you have any art needs, please give her a commission. She is a phenomenal artist. And I guarantee you, fam, you have a big mic promise that you would not be disappointed. Also, special thanks to all of my friends on Twitter. I wouldn't be here without you all. And a special thanks to all of you for watching this video. Please like this video if you like it. And dislike it if you dislike it, but if you want to be cool about disliking my video, please let me know in the comments below why you dislike it. What is it about my video that you dislike so that I can try to improve myself and be better? But you know what, fam? Even if you like my video, leave me a comment below. I love hearing from all you lovely guys, gals, non-binary pals, and waterfowls. Finding a comment on my video really makes my day. And if you like my content, please subscribe and turn your notifications on. Until next time, fam, remember, just be yourself and you'll be awesome. Peace out!